Jacob Bond Performance here. I actually shot the intro to this video almost two weeks ago when I received my new Typhoon 230. I've got my 210 EXT down there. I'm gonna do a little bit of comparison between the two. But to be honest, I'm a little bit rusty today, so uh, not trying to make excuses. But ran some beads with the Typhoon just now, and I'm really impressed. carbon copied my settings from the old machine to the new machine. I weld a lot of the same thing. These are production parts for Mark 7 GTI, which got one over here in the shop with my full turbo back on it and front mount intercooler. But that's not what this video is about. So now that I've done a few passes with the new Typhoon, I'm gonna switch back to 210 EXT and for comparison's sake, be using my same CK Worldwide and Furic cup setup. So the only difference, settings and everything else being the same, is I'll take that adapter off and run that off 220 as well. And we'll see what the difference is between the two. So one of the things you may have noticed in that little time lapse is they have switched the position of the leads on these welders. So the positive terminal being on the right on the new Typhoon, the negative lug uh, being on the right on the older models, this 210 EXT. So I've got all the same uh, settings dialed in, backflows running. Now this is a, a different, well, we're doing a lap instead of a butt. I've got another lap to do on that side when I switch back to the Typhoon. The one thing I will say before I even get started is the Typhoon is incredibly smooth. Uh, the arc is more stable than I ever remembered the 210 EXT being. So just going straight back and forth, let's try and get a good arc shot and see uh, if you can see the difference that I'm observing from behind the hood. Before I go any further into this video, I'm sure some of you are wondering what my settings are. Now, granted, settings aren't the gospel. What works for me won't work for everybody, but this is just a, a standard stainless setting that I've been using for years. So just a little bit of pre-flow to get us going, rolling in with 30 amps. Upslope takes one second up to a full 88 amps if I've got the throttle wide open on that. Pulse time on, 44%, pulse frequency, 1.7 pulses per second. Pulse amps, 38, so that's the back side of the pulse when it drops down from 88 or wherever I've got the throttle set. Downslope takes a half a second down to 10 amps on the back side and post flow of 8.8 .8 seconds. So if I'm welding something thin like this 065 stainless tubing, 88 amps, gives me enough horsepower to get full pen. And then I've also got a range to where if I'm starting to blow through or uh, if I've got a little bit too much heat in the part, I can back out of it. And even with the finger control, which most people use a pedal, I've got great control there. And uh, when I go to weld something thicker, I'll crank this thing up to about 105 to 125 amps, depending on how thick of a hanger or a flange I'm welding on, but 105 is my standard go-to for say a V-band or a regular exhaust hanger. Then looking back at the older style screen, you've got all the same settings, but instead of a digital screen that's navigated just with the 
this button here, scroll and click to be able to change. We've got individual buttons here. So this is an old setting. I would always have it starting out at 80 and then just crank it up to 88 and crank my post flow up to 8.8. .8. But this is the tried and true setting that I've built thousands of parts with, and it's worked well for me. Uh, another preference thing with the Fury Cup, the consumables that come with these welders as well as the torches will get you started. That's a preference thing. I've just moved to a CK torch and that's what I'm used to. So that's what I'm sticking with for this video. The most important thing for you guys when you're starting out is when you make adjustments, change one thing at a time, you're messing with gas settings, pulse settings, amps, all at once you're not going to know what's doing what. So really take your time and change just one thing at a time. But I've got tons of time invested in getting these settings where I like them, getting my flow rates where I like them for the purge and the, on the torch, and obviously what consumables work for me personally for, for stainless as well as for aluminum. So running the ultra high purity gas because almost everything I do is stainless I'm trying to uh, do everything I can to up the final product and that's where we're at with this so you'll see my old iPhone here you wouldn't keep the same computer for 10 years you wouldn't keep the same cell phone for 10 years the technology advance between when this machine was developed and the new one is what's given our smoother arc and uh, it's hard to describe it's not so the start is really snappy with this it's like seamlessly it's just on so it's like the difference between say more of a an analog click versus just there like it, it's hard to describe but i am really enjoying the new typhoon 230. i'm going to move this stuff off the table and keep going with these parts so to recap, to sum it up, the new Typhoon is just as buttery smooth as it gets. Um, not saying that there's anything wrong. I've boxed it up already with the 210 EXT, but uh, definitely an easier to use arc, definitely a more stable arc, starts and stops. Couldn't be any smoother. It's, there's really no way to describe it. So. If you are in the market for a welder and you're weighing your options, I was actually weighing my options between the 210 EXT and just moving to a 255 EXT. And speaking with a representative at Everlast, the, the Typhoon is just leaps and bounds uh, more advanced on the back end. Uh, the digital interface is really cool. So to make your adjustments, you're scrolling, clicking, and then adjusting. You've got up to 10 different profiles you can save and lock in there. So if you don't want to accidentally change something or if other people use your machine and it's locked, that's an extra step to keep those settings in place where you want them. So I'll definitely do a long-term review and once I get my feet wet with some different material, uh, this machine does have a sine wave that the 210 didn't have. And it's got back end options. There's a hidden. Oh, yeah. The hidden screen that if you touch the save and the gas purge together, it's got different options for. Oh, it went away already. But different options for different things that weren't available on the older models so that's cool as well uh something i've heard nitpick before and i'll nitpick it as well having the the gas line come out in the center of the rear of the machine if this were to be mounted on a cart with a bottle right behind it that would cause some interference there and it's not a big deal to put a 90 on there but being as i leave mine in kind of a workstation setup where it's just sitting on the cabinet it's not an issue at all for me but something to consider 
with any Everlast machine, if you are going to be wheeling it around on a cart, you probably want to put a 90 on your gas line. Other than that, I love the integrated handles. Got options for picking this thing up because it is a very heavy machine compared to the old one. And nice serviceable case design. I took a picture, I'll show you uh, the fitment of putting an Allen socket into these holes. You can tell that they've really taken pride in the engineering behind this thing to make everything fit and finish the way you'd want it. Um, just overall, it's like I, like I compared before, it's like moving from an older iPhone to a newer iPhone, going from the EXT to the Typhoon. And uh, as far as doing little things, you know, I've invested a lot of money between table and tools, back purge equipment to get my welds to where they are today, which I am not a welder by trade. I'm actually an aircraft mechanic. Bond Performance is my side business here. Where I work from home during the week. Um, so not a professional welder, but I play one on the weekends. So self-taught, I've been doing this since the 210 EXT was new, about five years and uh, MIG welding prior to that, but um, yeah, what else can I say? It's, uh, I've only got a few hours on it. I've got a downpipe. I'm getting ready to start on now. I'll throw some footage of that at the end of this video and give some final thoughts then. But if you've watched up to this point, I really appreciate it. Uh, money well spent on the Typhoon. Let's, uh, let's put some more hours on it and see if I have any final thoughts. Alright, so I'm not a guy who enjoys welding flex sections just because of layers and uh, obviously I could have taken some breaks and kept some heat out of it to keep the color off it, but it's a downpipe, it's going to change colors anyway. So this Typhoon is so easy to control. I would say the control benefit of the arc is right up there with the buttery smoothness. It is night and day. And again, I'm not a professional. I do this on the side, maybe 10 to 30 hours a week. Uh, the control of the arc is just so confidence inspiring to just plow right through. These flexes have several layers and that's always been a challenge for me. Uh, it's honestly like cheating compared to the 250. So props to Everlast. I'm gonna keep going on this downpipe. If you keep watching, you know, we're gonna build this downpipe the whole way through. It's for a Mark 7 GTI. Just phenomenal improvement on an already great machine. Now I didn't know what I was missing with the, two, the 210 EXT, but the Typhoon is just the icing on the cake. Every little thing I've done to improve uh, the equipment that I use to help, you know, with evolving my craft. I'm sure I'll look back at this video and think these welds suck, just like if I look back at a video or a picture from two or three years ago and think those welds suck. Uh, but it's uh, definitely a step in the right direction to up in my consistency, tying in these edges on the thick. Uh, stack of thin layers of this flex definitely highlights the benefits of having the more stable arc.
So here's the final product, all welded up. I can't speak highly enough of the Typhoon 230. It's, uh, the more I use it, the more the differences between the EXT and the Typhoon really shine. Just edge control and control of the arc in general greatly improved arc stability. I don't know what they changed, but it was definitely a step in the right direction. And of all the tools I've invested in and making my products uh, better aesthetically and you know better welds in general, this is definitely the uh, the best one I've done. Obviously, every little bit makes a difference. Take aesthetics, cutting fixtures and purge plugs. The Furic cups, those clamps, um, the sort of flat table, everything helps. But uh, if, if you were debating at all about which welder to get and you've got the money to invest in a Typhoon, highly recommended. And like I said, I'll do a long-term review once I uh, put some, some more hours on this thing. I've actually got another identical downpipe and midpipe to build for Mark 7. So I'm going to get started on that. Subscribe if you haven't already. Keep an eye out for the long-term review and more fabrication content. I'll add the link in the description to my most popular fabrication video. And that's... Uh, basically prep and technique for 304 stainless like I welded today. Thanks for watching.